two, one. Hello, everybody. This is TNT pre- presenting the Press Circle to Pin podcast. And today we are doing episode nine, Battleground 2016. And yes, I got it right this time. Did I'm you? Ter- yes, because last time I, did, I said 2006. And you kept uh, calling oh, me shit. out on it. Shit, I thought it was 2004. Oh, okay then. You might, you might want to join us in the new new year, buddy. Anyway, I'm Turbo joined. Revolution. I'm Turbo joined as always by my car fanatic Canadian buddy Thunder. Well, that's about an accurate description of me. So. Yeah, I, I was gonna say especially, car fetish guy, es- but never especially mind. especially the Canadian part. Well, yeah. Well, I couldn't exactly get that wrong. Anyway. No. All right, so we actually uh, first of all we apologize for being so late with this episode. Um, uh, he's been ill, and I've been to a convention, so. Yeah. Just a lot of things going on, and I couldn't put this off anymore because I've got a busy week next week anyway, so fuck it, we're going to have to do this tonight. We'll do it live. Yes, we're doing it live. Um, Alright, so we're not, uh, we will talk about the uh, brand split and everything, but we're going to do that afterwards because obviously that took place after the uh, pay-per-view, so we're going to just head straight into the pre-show well, technically for this. the brand split happened before the, just before the pay-per-view, but it really hasn't, it doesn't start... Let me try it again. It really didn't take effect until after the pay-per-view. Well, so. yeah, yeah, that's why I meant it. It's just it doesn't really, it didn't really have any effect. Uh, but there has been two Raws and two Smackdowns since then, and um, we will probably talk about them briefly <laughs> after we're done with the pay-per-view. So we're just gonna head straight into the pre-show for this one. All right. Uh, as always, I didn't really make any notes about you know the panel and all that, uh, unless you did. I paid absolutely zero attention to the panel. I didn't pay any attention to any interviews. I was there just to watch the tag team match between the Usos and Breezango. Yeah, I just I didn't pay really attention to that either because when I watch these events, I'm with I'm with other friends and we're just talking and we're just kind of having some fun. So really, it's kind of why Turo mostly does the notes and stuff because I'm usually He's with, the one because having I'm with fun. them. Yeah, because I'm with them, it's harder for me to kind of really be able to point out everything because of what's going on with me and a bunch of friends. Which is where you get to listen to my beautiful voice for the next few minutes. Sure. Uh, as, anyway, as I said, the pre-show's only match was the Usos versus Breezango. Uh, the Usos uh, start with the early control of the match. We get a nice backbreaker double team attack, uh, a catapult forearm slingshot elbow from Breezango. Uh, nice double team move right there. We then get Uso. Oh, by the way, I should point out it's been over a week since this paper was on, so my notes are pretty much all I've got to go on. My memory is completely fucked. Hooray, mine too. Uh, the Usos get the tag and take control of the match. Uh, we get so many super kicks from the, the Usos, as is becoming the normal uh, match type for those two. Uh, Fandango then gets a super kick of his own for a two count. We get a nice electric chair double team that's denied. Uh, the Usos get uh, the Usos with a body cross on both the opponents. We get another two super kicks from the Usos. Uh, the Usos go for, for this Simona splash, countered with a knees and a roll up for a free count from uh, Tyler Breeze. Uh, pretty quick match, decent opener, uh, but I am getting so sick. Interesting definitely. result. Yeah, I, I definitely was surprised that the Usos didn't go over here. They've really gone down the totem pole in the last couple, uh, in the last six months. Well, they never really. Well, for the last six months, they really stopped becoming interesting because it, it, they pretty much have been the same thing since they debuted, and it's getting to the point where it's like at least try to change it up a bit, make yourself a bit more uh, unique. But they've just been what they've always been, and that's starting to become a bit of an annoyance. Which is what a lot. Uh, which is what a lot of people had a problem with with John Cena was he was just not changing his his style at all. I mean, that's why people got bored of him. And the Usos have been around for what seven years? Yeah, something about like right. that. Sounds about right. And they really, ha- as Thunder said, they really haven't changed their stick since they came here. It, yep, they're just they're just been they're just old and boring. <laughs> they're good at what they do, but they seriously need to change it up if they ever want to. Yeah, I don't know. Be a major tag team again. They need. They need to. They need to be able to change it up a bit so that so that people can get behind them better. Here's the thing: they're not bad in ring workers, but I am getting sick to death of just super kicks and someone drops from these two. It's getting boring. Every other yeah. move, every other move from the two of them is a super kick. They, they're they pretty much Super Kick City, and they're the presidents. Yeah, pretty much. 
the, the president and the vice president. Yep. All right, so um, that was pretty much all it was for the pre-show. As I said, I don't make notes about the interviews and stuff for the pre-show. Uh, because they're not. Because in most cases, they're not really too worth pointing out unless something really memorable happens, which usually on the pre-show doesn't happen. So yeah. Plus, like you know, I already have to review like a well over three hour show anyway. I'm not going to do the entire hour for the pre-show as well. But most of it's just going to be talking and talking in a bunch of shit from the panel that I really don't give a shit about. So yeah, pretty much. Uh, we got a very good opening package. There was a bit of flag thing going on here with all the wrestlers uh, holding flags with their um, logos and stuff on them. I actually thought it was really cool. It was definitely uh, a hype, uh, a way to hype up the show. I thought it was just a nice piece. I thought uh, nothing really else to say about it. Uh, but here's something interesting. We open up a pay per view with a women's. Match. We have Charlotte and Dana Brooke, Team Blonde, as I'm going to be n- naming them for these notes, against Sasha Banks, and to no one's surprise, Bailey. Actually, you say that. Uh, for me and the group of people, we're all doing predictions on the match outcomes. I was the only one to say Bailey. Really? I thought it was yeah. obvious. I thought the same. I was thinking it had to be Bailey, but. Well, who else could it be? I mean, Nikki Bella would not have gotten that big of a pop. Oh, she and not, and plus it wouldn't make a lot of sense either. Yeah, who else was there really? I mean, I suppose you could maybe have had Lita come back for one match or something, but yeah, I don't know. It just who was everyone else uh, predicting? Um, fuck! I wish I actually still had the thing to look at because my friend made like a uh, an article, like a Google document about it to keep track of everything and if i still had that link i'd actually just quickly look it up so i could peek at it and be like oh yeah that's what oh fair enough uh personally it's, I, pro- I, it's probably it's pro- it's up there in bagel club or something it's just i'd have to g- g- scroll up to find it so uh fair enough um but yeah uh, apparently to some people's surprise it was bailey <laughs> Um, as I said, yeah. this did not surprise me or Thunder at all, so I, don't get me wrong, so happy to see her, and the crowd went apeshit to see her um, on the main uh, main roster, uh, which I will point out was just for the one night. She's still part of NXT for now. Um, right. Uh, but yeah, I'm, the crowd went cr- uh, crazy for her introduction. It, 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 was, it was worth it. Yeah, I, let's say... I, Anytime you get Sasha Banks and Bailey in the same ring, the crowd are gonna go fucking ape show. Oh, and by the way, I now have seen both of their matches from last year. Good. Took Holy long enough. fuck! It was a thing of beauty. Yes, you can you can see exactly why it was talked about so much. Uh, yo, absolutely. I was on my seat uh, edge of this uh, edge of my seat for the entirety of both matches. There. Oh, okay. I got it up. I think. Oh, okay then. Oh, Phylon is an owner's bin. Oh, that For sucks. For continued access, please make a copy. Okay, I'm going to make a copy. Uh, yeah, i got to figure out where it is. Okay, the mystery partner. Uh, I, I was the only one that said Bailey. Uh, one, my friend Jimmy said Alicia Fox for some reason. What? Who the fuck could yeah. cheer for her? Who even remembers her? I remember her, but she was shit in the ring. Ryan Rhino said Summer Ray. Ugh. I think Mu. I don't know what Mueller was singing. He, he said Trish Stratus. If they had been in Canada, I would have said it's a possibility. Where were they? Yeah, they were not in in uh, Canada. They were, in fact, in Washington D.C. Uh, if they'd have been in like Toronto or something like where Trish is from, I believe I would have said that's a possibility, but not a high one. Yeah. And then there was uh, Emil, who created this whole thing. Well, I don't know why. He said AJ Lee for some reason. Again, highly unlikely. Yeah, and then and then the other, there was two just meme answers. Like, Q, Q said the Shockmaster, and Torrance <laughs> said Gene Snitsky. Joe, you know I'd have liked to have seen Gene Snitsky dressed up as a Shockmaster. <laughs> It wasn't my trip. Yeah, but I, I can understand. Like I said, I, the only one there I could even comprehend being correct would be 
Trish Stratus if they'd have been in Toronto, but since they weren't, there was zero chance that I, I don't know where they got these picks from. You know, because Sasha obviously made it out to be a pretty big deal. I mean, most of those women are divas, not women's wrestlers. Summer Rae, Alicia Fox. Yeah, pretty you much. A.G. Lee was entertaining, but there's zero, uh, hardly any fucking chance of her coming back unless CM Punk comes back with her. Which probably isn't going to happen, so... Nope. Anyways, uh, now that I've finished with that... Well, we didn't actually get into the match yet, so nothing thingy. But yeah, the crowd went crazy for Bailey's introduction. And we start off with Team Blonde attacking from behind while the uh, the faces are basically, again, the crowd pumped up. Yep. Uh, the fight goes to the outside early. Uh, uh, the ref rings for the bell when they get back in and the match officially starts at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, Charlotte with corner chops, obviously getting the woos from the crowd. Doesn't matter if you're face or heel, that'll always get over. Uh, Sasha gets tagged in. Uh, slightly botched flying head scissors. Uh, Dana then tagged in. Uh, Bailey gets tagged in. Bailey with momentum uh, with the momentum until she gets bounced into the turnbuckle for a two count from uh, from Dana. Uh, Bailey overpowers Dana with, with a submission. I wasn't actually sure what it was though, so obviously I've just got it written down submission. I'm not professional people. <laughs> um, Neither am I. We did. I don't even. I don't. I don't even take notes because it's hard. Again, it's hard for me too when I'm. There's a whole bunch of people talking. Yeah. Plus, guys, I take notes, but I'm taking notes live, so I'm not actually pausing the paper. I'm having to take notes while I'm watching. It's hard to do. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, if you're watching it after it's uh, been aired, if you're watching it like a, a re if it's been put up somewhere, then. You can probably pause it then, but I, I could pause it, but at the same time, it kind of breaks stride and momentum and breaks the enjoyment factor a little bit as well. So eh, fair enough. Eh, fair enough. Uh, we get the "Let's Go Bailey" chant from the crowd. Uh, we get a nice roll up for a two count from Bailey. Uh, double clothesline collision. Uh, Sasha and Charlotte are both tagged in then to get the uh, the hot tag for Sasha. Uh, Sasha with me to the next uh, mid section for a two count. Uh, Crossbody for a two count as well. Uh, we then get Charlotte with a big boot and a natural selection, but the pin gets broken up by Bailey. Uh, the figure four is mm -hmm. counted into the bank statement. Uh, Bailey with a drop kick through the turnbuckle outside onto Dana to stop her from getting into the ring. Another backstabber into the bank statement onto Charlotte, and Charlotte taps out. And ta -da, the win. Uh, yeah, I thought it was a good match. Uh, it was a good match. Uh, great to see Bailey on the main roster, even if it was just for one night. Uh, the only thing is, I wish this match had gone longer. Yeah. Would have been nice to be a little bit longer. Uh, obviously, uh, three of the four horsewomen in the match. Uh, Dana, she held her own, you know. Um, you know, she didn't do anything wrong here. Um, no, I, of course I, not. I would love to see all four of the horse, horsewomen in the same match, though, I must admit. Uh, that is definitely on my uh, wish list for wrestling. Correct. Um, I'm not sure why exactly I'm saying correct, but you know, well, whatever. Well, I think you mean more like agreed. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. I, I, I'm going to be honest here. I look, you know, these women now have done such a good job. I'm actually looking forward to women's wrestling these days. It's it's so much better than it used to be. It's real. It's it's actually tolerable to watch, and that's the thing I really, I really missed. It's not just. Uh, slightly better though it's astronomically better I mean I'm not going to go into it yet but the women's title match on Raw the next night was fucking amazing uh, yes. but we'll go more into that later but um, uh, I didn't I didn't make any notes so I'm guessing there was probably just some adverts between matches uh, but there, there was no interview or backstage segment so we go straight into the match number two we have the New Day versus the Wyatt family six man tag um I'm gonna be honest here. I did not see any of the build up for this, but I loved the uh, the promo package before the match, showcasing all yeah, these they had segments. That, they had yeah, they had that one segment where they're fighting in like the woods thing. It was meant to be very silly and ridiculous because it was WWE's half-hearted attempt to try to make something silly like TNA's final deletion thing. Yeah, which I haven't seen actually, but I have heard mixed oh, things about. Oh boy, you need to watch it. It's an experience. Uh, I've seen like pictures and stuff, like screenshots taken. I haven't actually watched it though. 
Uh, but yeah, Again, I, even it's quite an experience. I did hear that WWE were basically making this feud uh, their final deletion thing. So uh, they didn't. They, it certainly was nowhere near as silly as final deletion, without question. And I and I think in a lot of ways that probably in many ways was intended. Well, yeah, I mean. At the end of the day, it's not just TNA. You're talking about the fucking Hardy Brothers here as well. You're not going to be able to match that kind of looniness. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but I, I thought the build-up looked pretty good. I, I actually kind of sad that I missed it. Um, but anyway, uh, both teams are basically starting off the match, and they basically make a big hassle about who's going to be in first, keep tagging each other out and in and stuff. Um, eventually we get Kofi and uh, Braun Strowman in there first. Uh, Strowman completely overpowers Kofi to begin. He tags in uh, Rowan. Uh, we get a long rest spot very early on. Uh, Kofi does ev- eventually manage to power out, though. Uh, Bray gets tagged in. Nice running sent on. Uh, Kofi is getting dominated for quite a while. He goes for a tag, uh, but gets a big close, uh, but gets clothesline in a big way. Uh, Bray stays, uh, stares down uh, Xavier, who apparently is supposed to be afraid of Bray, if that's correct. Yeah, something like that. And so, guys, I apologize, I missed the entire build-up, so I, I don't know. Uh, the Wyatt's trading tag... It's basically, it's almost as if, you know, Bray was trying to manipulate his mind and keep him out of, and, and whatnot, but it was, and then, you know, there's a segment where, you know, Xavier, in the match itself, where Xavier does manage to fight it off, and then the whole thing, you know, the whole creepy spider walk, and yeah. But that comes later. We'll get into yes. that in a few minutes. Uh, the Wyatt's doing some decent tagging action, uh, basically just staying in for a couple of seconds uh, and beating... Excuse me. <laughs> Lovely. Um, the Wyatt's uh, basically have Kofi in their corner, just uh, train tags and Basically doing some good old-fashioned heel tag team work. Uh, Kofi eventually manages to lead uh, to uh, send Bray outside by, I believe, lowering the ropes. Uh, Kofi eventually does get to tag in Big E. Uh, Big E, we have a big belly-to-belly suplex on Rowan. Uh, suplex to Rowan. And then uh, Rowan with... He hits Rowan with... Um, sorry, Rowan hits some kind of rock-bottom type move to Big E. Uh, I don't exactly know what it was. I can't describe it anything better than that. He does go for the pin, but Xavier does manage to break the pin up. Uh, yes. Kofi launches himself into Strowman outside. Uh, Kofi then gets a tag. Uh, Bray also gets tagged in. He goes for trouble in Paradise, but Bray ducks underneath it. Uh, Sister Abigail, but Xavier stops that. Uh, Xavier stares down Bray. Uh, Bray with a choke slam on Kofi. Uh, Xavier finally attacks Bray after a few minutes of hesitation. We get a nice splash off the top rope, a super kick to Rowan. Uh, Xavier gets choked by Strowman on the ropes. Uh, Biggie spears Strowman to the outside and apparently went with a bad landing. Uh, yeah, that 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 thing he did was looked very painful. I must have been like, typing the notes here because I didn't actually see it myself, uh, but everyone kept talking it's about a mid, it. It's a mid, it's, it was a dive from the middle rope or, or something like that. And, he, he usually and does the that, way though. he land and the way Big E lands, it looked like he almost broke his neck. He was fine, though, apparently. Yeah, apparently. He, he was wrestling the next night, so. Um, uh, Bray with his uh, upside down sp- uh, spider spot. Um,. Freaks Xavier out, hits his sister Abigail for the free count. Yeah, it was kind of a stranger ending, I suppose, but eh, nothing, nothing too much, I guess, to complain, really. Yeah, good match. Uh, felt a little off. Not, I, I kind of expected a little more, uh, but it was so weird to see the Whites get a win for a change on pay-per-view. Yeah, they because do, that doesn't usually happen. Yeah, it really doesn't. I think that's happened maybe three or four times in their entire career. Pretty much. Um, so, apparently between this match and the third one, uh, there was a promo showing off Roman's, uh, Twitter, and the crowd were brewing it big time. Yep. It wasn't even on screen, it was just his Twitter account. Yeah, just his Twitter. really don't like this guy. No, they don't. I can't blame them. Whoa, what the hell happened there? And we're back. Sorry about that. My hef- uh, my microphone fell out of my computer. 
anyways, now anyways, I've gotten that obligatory thing out. Back to the news. Yes. Alright, so uh, we'll uh, go straight into the third match because I don't think there was any interviews between parts. It's time for the first title match of the night, the United States Championship. The champion Rusev versus the challenger Zack Ryder. Uh, I like uh, the new... In- uh, I did make a note that I do like the new version of Ryder's music. Pretty much the same lyrics and everything as his last uh, theme, but it- it's got a different uh, sound to it and I thought it was really good. Yeah. Uh, the match starts. Uh, Rusev uh, out uh, amateur wrestling rider to begin with. Uh, actually, I will mention with Zack Ryder's theme. They actually briefly ch- tried a different woo woo thing. It originally went woo woo woo, and then people didn't like it, so they just went back to woo woo woo. And then yeah. Anyways. Oh, fair enough. Uh, Rusev out amateur wrestles rider to begin the match. Uh, Zack goes outside to trick Rusev. Uh, we get a missile. Dropkick attempt blocked by Rusev. Um, then the big burly Bulgarian hits uh, Zach with some big strikes. Uh, Rusev very much in control of the match to begin with. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Ryder comes no back worries. with a flurry. Sorry. Uh, I said no worries. Oh. Uh, Ryder comes back with a flurry of attacks. Uh, goes for the Broski boot, but he gets blocked. Uh, we get the suplex counter into a neck breaker for Zach. Uh, Broski Boot again, he actually hidden this time, only for a one count though. Uh, Rusev go for, uh, goes outside for a breather. He then drops Zack onto the barricade outside. Uh, Ryder moves and sends, uh, and Rusev sends himself into the barricade. Uh, Ryder with a missile drop kick off the barricade, decent move. Uh, we then get the Rough Rider and a elbow drop that gets countered. We get a massive kick from Rusev uh, and then he locks the accolade in. Uh, Zack does almost manage to break out of it, but Rusev overpowers him and basically just kind of falls back and puts all his weight on him, and eventually Zack Ryder taps out. Yep, it's pretty much a dominant streak of no one can really escape the submissions from, uh, uh, can escape Rusev from making that, from Rusev making them tap out. Well, especially when he just sort of leans backwards and drags his opponent with him. Yes. It's actually pretty good. Um, I actually thought this was a surprisingly good match. Um, it was, yeah, it was fine. I wasn't expecting anything, but I got more than I was expecting, so that's good. Um, mm-hmm. uh, the only bad note is after the match, out comes Mojo Raleigh? Yep, Mojo Raleigh. I know nothing about this guy. Uh, he looks like a complete idiot. That's all I can really say for now. Stupid idiot. Uh, you're Canadian, so you get to say that. I don't. <laughs> Um, sure. <laughs> I, I don't know anything about him. Is he any good? He's fine. Oh, such an endearing. Um. I I there's stuff that there's not. I, I don't really know a whole lot of stuff, but that of this thing, one of the stuff I do know that is one thing, and he's he's all right. Oh, no, no, I can't I, I can't really complain about him. I, I, which I guess is a good thing. So true. I only saw saw him in the uh, the battle royal uh, the battle royal on SmackDown. Uh, so I haven't actually seen him in any singles matches yet. Uh, just to clarify, I've only seen one SmackDown. And I didn't get to watch both of them. So um, yeah. we get our first backstage promo. Uh, sorry, backstage segment of the night uh, with uh, Mick Foley, Stephanie McMahon, and Seth Rollins. Um, I thought this was fine. Uh, did its job in getting Seth over. Um, I don't really have anything bad to say about it, really. <clears throat> well, there you go. Nothing uh, really bad to say about it. All right, so I'm pretty sure this next match is going to give Thunder a boner. We've got Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens. Like you wouldn't believe. So hard. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Oh crap! I can't even fit it in my pants now. Shit. <laughs> it's coming everywhere. <laughs> well, abandon all hope. Uh, I just by the name of the uh, just by the people in this match, you know it's going to be at least decent. But we'll go into that more as we get go along. I'll yep. get a good build up package, uh, showcasing the two and their history, and then out comes Sammy. And I am absolutely beginning to love this entrance by this guy. Mm-hmm. The ultimate baby face theme. Correct. All right. The match starts off. Sammy goes for a hell of a kick early, but uh, Owens rolls out of the way and out of the ring. Uh, the two of them out, uh, begin the match outside for the better part of it. Sammy is sent straight into the barricade. 
Uh, always goes to attack him, but he gets sent out of the barricade himself. Uh, we then I can eventually... swear I can hear... I, I'm, I'm not mean to cut you off. I can swear I can hear someone snoring. It's my dog. Oh, your dog? Yeah, he's snoring. <sighs> All right, moving on. Little fucker. Um, we yeah. eventually get back inside. Uh, the jewel chant are already starting from the crowd. Uh, both uh, obviously chanting for both Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. Obviously, a big show of respect because they know these two are going to put on a great match. Um, yeah. Sami Zayn goes up top and gets what I like to call the ball splitter on the top rope after getting knocked off. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kevin Owens with a cannonball for a two count. Owens with some uh, Ric Flair chops. Uh, Sami gets dropped uh, rib first onto the top rope, running sent on by Owens. Uh, then locks in a chin lock for a little while. Sammy eventually powers out and hits close a uh, Owens with a massive clothesline. Uh, we get a nice Michinoku driver for a two count from Sammy. Uh, he then attempts the, a diving move, but Owens grabs his foot from the outside. Uh, Sammy botches a springboard move. Now, a lot of people have been questioning whether this was intentional or not, and or if it was not intentional, and they just sort of written into the story of the match. Because he was—I don't know what he was going for exactly, but he. He sort of sat on the top rope to spring himself outside, but he sort of landed on the uh, the apron. If you know where, if you know what part of the match. Yeah, I I I, 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 I know the spot you're talking about. Yeah. I think he just he just didn't get the momentum that he was trying to get, and that kind of kind of it didn't really work out. I mean, Owens did, and Owens, but at least Owens did the best he could to try yeah, to cover always it up. Yeah, so always try, always try. It could have been, there. it could have been a lot worse. But thanks to that, Owens at least coming in to trying to help out it. It basically avoided being really bad. So I, the reason I bring it up, obviously, is the fact that obviously Owens tried to get there in time to make sure he could take some of the fall for Sammy, but the two yeah. of them writ the pardon me, uh, writ it actually into the story of um, Sammy potentially hurting his uh, surgically repaired shoulder. So you know, props to these two guys for that. But anyway, back to yeah. the match. Um, we got a blue thunder bomb inside the ring for a two count. Uh, Sammy goes to the top rope. Uh, he goes for a diving move, but it gets avoided. Owens hits a super kick for a two count, and then uh, Owens locks in a cross face. Uh, yep. Owens is back in control of the match for a while. Hits two massive clotheslines. Gets a explorer suplex into the corner from, uh, but gets hit with a explorer su- explode. Is it exploder or exploding? I think it's exploder. Explosive suplex. Then I've 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 uh, I've lost a lot of my zen. Fair enough. Uh, Explosive suplex into the corner from Sammy. Uh, he goes for a hell of a kick, but Owens again rolls out the ring. Uh, Sammy goes to the top rope, uh, but Owens goes for a Samo- uh, goes for a Samoan drop, but Sammy blocks it. Uh, Sammy with a massive brain buster on the uh, ring edge ra- apron. Uh, pretty nasty, actually. It actually sounds... Every time someone gets hit on the uh, apron, it sounds like it hurts. Um, yeah, about right. It really does sound like it hurts. Yeah, it's like... In the ring, you can hear, like, some padding, like, it's, if it's in the middle of the ring. But when it's on the apron, it just sounds like a dull thud, like... Like that. Yeah, about... Uh, pretty much like that. Um... We then get a This Is Awesome chant from the crowd, uh, deservedly, mm-hmm. deservedly so as well. Uh, both, Very much so. Yeah, both men back inside the ring, dual chant starting up again. Uh, Sammy with that corner DDT spot through the ring ropes. Uh, but he gets blocked as Owens hits a super kick as he's diving through. Unfortunately, we don't get to see it very well because of shitty camera work. Um, yeah, boy, oh boy, the camera work. <sighs> tell me about it. Anyway, Owens with a cannonball. Um, Owens then goes to the top for a frog splash for a two count. Uh, Owens then goes for his t- uh, pop-up power bomb. Uh, Sammy gets a tornado DDT. A hell of a kick blocked with a super kick. Another pop-up power bomb attempt blocked with a sup- exploder suplex two times, I believe. Uh, uh, sorry, I, sorry, I lost my notes there. Uh, the crowd lost at this point. Yeah, I, no, I lost where get I, together, man. I lost where I was in the uh, the notes here. Uh, the, the crowd at this point are completely off their fucking seats and cheering madly. Um, yeah, as I as you would. As as deserve as deserving as well. 
Uh, we do get a pop-up power bomb this time for a two count though. Owens slaps Sammy around for a little while. Another exploder suplex. Uh, Sammy eventually hits the hell out of the kick. And then we get the nice um, spot where Owens just kind of collapses onto Sammy. And Sammy's just there in two minds of what to do. This right here is storytelling at its best. Uh, we'll go more into this in a second, but Sammy eventually decides to hit him with a second hell of a kick for a free count. And yes. That's a clean win. I... Uh was not expecting Zayn to win, actually, to be honest, but I'm okay with that. I don't think I've ever seen Zayn beat Owens one-on-one. -on -one. I think that may have been what they were trying to yeah. do anyway, so... Uh, I thought this was a fantastic match. It... Yeah, how could you argue against yeah. it? It was... It's it's basically a potential match of the year candidate, and Zayn's already been in a potential match of the year candidate. This just adds to his resume. Yeah, I have to admit. I, and, a hey, hands up. I didn't get it. The first time I saw the guy, uh, I, I can't remember what it was. Technically, it was the Rumble, but the one, uh, the uh, singles match he had against Cody Rose, I was not impressed. But ever since that time, I've been proven time and time again to be wrong. Very much so. I've, this, is, this guy is one of the reasons I am enjoying wrestling so much right now. Yes, because people who can actually wrestle. Oh my god, it's yeah. finally nice to see again after all this time. Don't get me wrong, I, I like Kevin Owens, but I like Sami Zayn so much. He's he's I love I love the both of them because yeah. they they pretty much counter the perfect heel and the perfect face. Exactly. Basically. Zayn is a face that is actually over as a face. Yeah, How a hard to, is that to do? A face, to cr a face that the crowd actually can really get into. Yeah. He pretty much had, like, he, like, the amount of cheers he's getting, he's pretty much Daniel, almost Daniel Bryan amounts of love. I mean, not quite, because Bryan was li literally in fucking sane, but, oh, yeah. you know, still, it was really good. Bryan, he's, D that, Daniel Bryan was more over than Jesus, so. You still there? Yes, I am still here. Don't worry. I'm just saying, Daniel Bryan was more over than Jesus. It's going to be hard to top that. Yes, and now Seth Rollins will have to figure out a way to become as liked as Bryan now that he is called, now that he is nicknamed CrossFit Jesus. Very true, very According true. to Shane McMahon. Uh, I... Yeah, I, I know. I think... I'm going to be honest here. I don't think it's going to be a surprise for anyone what our match of the night is later on. So, <laughs> Well, yes. I actually seriously need to pee, so I'll be right back. All right. Well, not while we're pausing, because I'll just keep talking for a moment. I don't really have anything to say, other than I know we promised that we would do a live commentary session of uh, WrestleMania 1. We still plan to do that at some point in the future, but until then... We'll just get it wound to it whenever we can, I suppose. We're off. Uh, Thunder's being to pee, so we can continue with the commentary. Yes. All right, so... Thankfully, thankfully, I was able to get it out, and now I'm feeling all good and sort, 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 whatever. <laughs> well, peeing is always good, so... Yes. All right, so I just need to have a look where I was in my notes because I lost track again. <laughs> All right, um, after the uh, 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 Zayn versus Owens piece of art, um, we get a panel segment, but honestly, I wasn't paying attention to it because I was too busy headbanging to Sami Zayn's music. Um, <laughs> That's the first time I've ever heard anyone say they were headbanging to his music. <laughs> well, it's good music. What can I say? I love that. Theme it's song. great. It's great music, but. Uh, match number five: Natalia versus Becky Lynch. Two diva, uh, two women's honey. Let's say diva. Two women's matches on one pay per view. Don't worry, we are past that diva space. Well, I, I don't know about that. Well, even even, even Marie's back on the fucking main roster. Yeah. Uh, we'll go more into that later. Uh. Obviously, uh, Natalia turned heel last month. For, uh, I think it was Extreme Rules, was it? Uh, or was it Money in the Bank? I think so, yeah. Yeah, it was Money in the Bank. Can't I, I can't even really recall much anymore. Oh, My memory sucks. 
Uh, whatever, but um, yeah, N- Nadia turned heel recently, and she turned heel by attacking Becky Lynch, so obviously that's not a bit of a rivalry between these two, so... Uh, the women uh, tie up at the start of the match, uh, Becky with a waist lock takedown, uh, actually a couple of them, uh, Nadia goes outside for a quick breather, uh, when she goes back in the ring, um, Becky with a roll up for a two count, uh, we got a nice drop kick from Becky, uh, N- Nadia goes outside again for another breather, uh, sneak attacks and Natty's then in control of the match. We get a nice lay lock on Becky, but she reverses it into an armbar. Uh, Natalia gets away and she hissed, uh, and she pretty much spends the next couple of minutes targeting the legs of Becky Lynch. Uh, leg lock again, uh, and then Natty's showing off doing her handstands and all that stuff that she likes to do, uh, which actually makes more sense for a heel. She was doing it as a face as well a few times. Uh, a yet another leg hold. Uh, Becky reverses and goes for the Disarmor, I think that's what she calls it. Disarmor, yep. Yeah. Uh, a nice sends a Gary from Becky. She then hits a clothesline and exploder suplex for a two count. A lot of people are hitting these exploder suplexes these days. Um, it's, it's, it's apparently a popular move to do. Yeah, it's actually just nice to see people using suplexes again. We went a good couple of years with anyone hardly using them. Mm-hmm. Other than Brock Lesnar, but... Um, uh, Natty goes for the discus clothesline, but it gets blocked. Uh, Becky goes for the disarmor, but that gets blocked again. Uh, Natty's sharpshooter gets blocked. We get a pin attempt for a two count. Uh, Natty then gets the sharpshooter locked in, but Becky manages to get to the ropes. Uh, Becky with a missile drop kick for a two count. Uh, Natty with a very long sharpshooter for the submission, and she eventually gets the submission win. Took a while, but it happened. Yeah, very much so. Uh, decent match, actually, but the crowd were really dead for this, which kind of took they away were prob- from it. They were probably burnt out from the yeah. Zayn and Owens match. You'll see that with anything. If it's if the best match of the night that gets the crowd going crazy is not the last match, the next match is basically like the hangover match. Yeah, that unfortunately was very much why this match suffered. If the crowd had been into this a little bit more, it wouldn't have been so bad. In fact, it wasn't a bad match. It was actually a pretty decent match. I will say, though, I think these two had a better match on SmackDown. Yes. Uh, again, decent match, but uh, sadly the crowd was still burnt out, so can't blame them. And mm-hmm. Well, that's about it. Only so much you can say, I guess. Yeah. Uh, kind of, I will say this, I'm still a bit annoyed that they put Becky Lynch on SmackDown. Well, they kind of need to have at least a good, a good women's wrestler on SmackDown, no, because... I want all four horsewomen on the same fucking show, damn it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, um, backstage segment this time with uh, the WWE champion Dean Ambrose, uh, Daniel Bryan, and Shane. Obviously representing the SmackDown side. Uh, another decent segment. Uh, nothing wrong with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've kept these backstage segments short and sweet, so not, nothing else to really say. They're usually less than a minute and a half long. Uh, straight into match number six: Make Darren Young great again versus The Miz. Uh, Obviously, Darren Young has been tutored by Bob Backlund. I have seen zero of these um, segments between the two, so I don't know much about what's been going on there other than the fact that the two of them are in a lot of vignettes together. Yes. Uh, Darren with a quick start, out-wrestling The Miz, uh, waistlock takedown. Uh, Miz eventually comes back with some momentum of his own but gets stopped by Darren. Um... Darren eventually gets a two count. Uh, Maurice distracts Darren and he's pushed to the outside. Uh, Miz takes control and gets a two count. A nice long head lock from the Miz. Uh, Miz's neck breaker mm-hmm. combo block. He goes for his neck. Oh, sorry, again. Miz goes for his neck breaker combo. He'll get there. I will eventually. Miz goes for his neck breaker combo but gets blocked. Uh, both men going for a back slice uh, pin, showing a bit of a power struggle between the two. Um. We do eventually get the backslide pin for a two count from Darren. Uh, Miz gets the big boot. Uh, Darren with a massive close out of the corner. Uh, Darren goes back and control of the match. He drops the Miz on the apron, gets a two count from it. Uh, we get the cross face tricking ring counted with the ropes. Uh, Miz attempts to leave the ring but gets blocked, by, uh, gets blocked from uh, exiting the ring area by Bob Backlund. Uh, Darren eventually drags the Miz back into the ring by his hair. Uh, Maurice slaps Bob outside. 
Uh, the Miz attacks a distracted Darren, who sees all this, and Maurice gets the Miz to attack Bob back, and after she uh, fakes Bob attacking her. Uh, Darren locks in the chicken wing outside to Miz, and for some reason the ref calls for the bell, even though, technically speaking, there was no real reason to call for a bell. Mm. Uh, I thought this was actually leading up to be a pretty good match, but this was a terrible finish. Uh, it made absolutely it, zero sense. It was not a very good finish. Here's the thing. You don't disqualify the two wrestlers if the two managers are getting are going at it outside. Pretty I think it was a count out actually, because I couldn't, could, I could have sw- actually, I don't know. No, I can't I'm, even remember I'm pretty now. sure they said it was a double DQ. I can't remember now anymore. Yeah, I'm almost certain it was a double DQ, but the fact of the matter is, there was nothing to disqualify either guy for. It, it was just a very, it was a poor booking decision. It just didn't make any sense. If oh wait, no, no, no. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a double. It was a double DQ for some reason. Yeah, it did make a lot of sense because what? Why would they have to do anything? I mean, it may have been because the whole crossface chicken wing Young was putting on Miz outside the ring. I was thinking it was a count out thing, but that no. would have made more sense. I just don't understand. Yeah, it was a very poor booking decision, but oh well, a decent match overall. Nothing great, uh, but was leading to something good. Uh, yeah. No interview or anything backstage. Straight into match number seven. We get uh, Cena, Enzo, and Cass versus AJ and the club in the six man tag. Correct. Uh, Enzo comes out acting like the Energizer Bunny. Um, He's always the Energizer yeah, Bunny. I don't know. He was, he was extremely hyper at Battleground until we saw him on Raw uh, um, when he came out with Sasha. Then he was like a fucking. I don't know. It's like someone put fucking. Um, what is it, speed into his coffee or something. Um, well, I mean, if you, the promo he had here was just outrageous. Oh, yeah, he had a good five-minute promo. Yeah. And the crowd loved it. Because the guy can talk. He, he's That's his best ability by far. He's not a bad he wrestler. Has, he, yeah, he, oh, no, he's a, he is a good wrestler. It's just when he comes to the, to the mic, he is just amazing, really good. He's yeah. Like, he can come up with stuff on the fly better than really anyone else I've seen in a long time. Very much so, but we'll go more into Enzo probably at another time. Anyway, uh, Enzo and Anderson are starting things off. A bit of a interesting start there. Uh, the crowd are chanting for AJ once he gets tagged in. We get the soccer mom chant to AJ, which was a joke that Enzo made about AJ's hairstyle. Um... AJ out wrestling Enzo. Cass gets tagged in, uh, as does Anderson. Uh, we get a nice double team move from Enzo and Cass. Uh, Enzo gets sent over the top row on Anderson and Gallows outside. Uh, basically launched into the two of them. Uh, AJ then goes to attack um, Cass, but he also gets sent outside onto Enzo and the club from Big Cass. Uh, Cass then tags in Enzo when everything's, everyone's back inside. We get a double team slam onto Anderson. Uh, we get the Cena jewel chant from the crowd, obviously. Let's go, Cena. Cena sucks. Everyone knows it by you now. Know, the usual. Uh, we get a jackhammer from Gallows for a two count. Uh, even though Michael Cole called it something entirely differently, which was incorrect. Even I know that's a jackhammer. Um, what does he know? Well, yeah. You'd think after 20 years of doing that job, he'd be better at it by now. <laughs> anyway, Enzo attempts a combat, but it gets denied. Uh, Anderson uh, with a big boot in the corner. Uh, Enzo pretty much being thrown around like a piece of shit right now uh, goes for another tag but gets denied by Anderson with a bat breaker uh, AJ throws Enzo into the barricade uh, Enzo launches AJ over the top rope uh, manages to outsmart uh, uh, outsmarts something I completely must have messed up my typing here uh, B eventually goes for a tag but it gets denied again uh, Cena eventually does get tagged in. He does his normal five moves of doom. Um, he goes for the AA on Styles, but it gets countered, and Styles hits him with a Pele kick. Uh, goes for the Styles Clash, uh, but Enzo stops it. Uh, DDT to AJ. Uh, a nice Arn Anderson type spine buster from uh, Anderson. Uh, cast with a fall away slam. Anderson with a sit down power bomb. Um, All the moves, basically. Pretty much everyone at this point is coming in and hitting big-time moves. Uh, we get a phenomenal forearm attempt. It gets blocked. Uh, 
an attitude adjustment to AJ for a two count. Uh, but Anderson breaks up the pin. Uh, Anderson with his spine buster again to Cena on the announce table. Uh, everyone's outside now. Uh, Cena's almost counted out, but obviously does his thing where he waits till nine and a half and then jumps back to life like he's just been hit with 50,000 volts of electricity. Yeah, it's, basically just, as, it's basically as if his battery's just recharged. Yeah, and then he suddenly dies when he gets back in the ring. Yep. It's like, so much for that. Yeah. Uh, Stars Clash is hit, but Cass breaks the pin. Uh, big boot outside. Uh, Magic Killer to Big Cass. Uh, Enzo fights both the club members for a short amount of time, and the crowd start chanting for Enzo. Uh, Gals as with, I expected. Yeah. Gals with a super kick to Enzo. Uh... AJ goes to the top rope, Cena blocks it, and he gets the Super AA off the top rope, which hits, and he gets the free count from that. So Cena and Team ENC win. Yeah, uh, I not. I it was an alright match. I, 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 I liked it. Was a good it. match. I thought it was actually a pretty good match. All the guys. Yeah, it was did, a good match. All everyone here looked strong. Um, nobody looked weak at all. Uh, really good. Uh, obviously with. Uh, uh, Cena and AJ being on SmackDown and Enzo and Cass and the club being on Raw. Uh, this will be the last time we see this match for uh, probably for a while. Uh, but this has led to, obviously, Cena versus AJ at SummerSlam. Uh, yep, that's pretty much confirmed at this point yeah. on SmackDown. Uh, because AJ obviously won their match at, uh, I think it was Money in the Bank, was it? Yep. And now Cena technically won this, even though it was a six-man tag, so they won a piece. Please, God, let AJ win. <laughs> That's all I can say. Hey, I, I, it, would be, it would be good if he did. It would be better. Cena's not going to be there much longer anyway, so... Mm-hmm. Uh, Alright, then we come to probably the lowest point of the show. Chris Jericho with his highlight reel segment. Uh, his uh, guest for tonight was, of course, Randy Orton, finally making his return after about nine months of uh, rehab. Uh, nice to see Orton back in the ring. Um... Basically, the two, two of them trade barbs and, uh, barbs and stuff and talk about Orton's upcoming match at SummerSlam against Brock Lesnar. Uh, and talk about how well, it's only going to take one RKO to change things and keeps teasing it by pretending to hit Chris with the RKO throughout the entire thing. It eventually does right at the end. I thought this was a decent segment, but this went on way too long. Oh, Definitely. Why couldn't you give this to the women's tag team match instead? Good question. Uh, it, like I say, I don't know. Uh, good to see Orton back, as I said, but this just... You could have shaved five minutes off this easily. Mm-hmm. All right, so after that, it's time for the WWE Championship. Dean Ambrose, a champion, versus Rollins, versus Reigns. Finally, we get the Shield triple threat match we've been begging for for the last two years. It finally happened. Oh, my God. Yep. All right. We get a fantastic promo to start off with, showing the history of the uh, Shield and all that. Yep. Uh, nothing wrong with it that I could tell. Um, out, before the match actually starts, out come the GMs and the commissioners for Raw and SmackDown. A massive pop for Daniel Bryan as he comes out. Um, we get a Roman sucks chance to start with. Yeah, that didn't take long at all. Yeah, that's my first note. Uh, Roman set tackles Seth outside and chases him. Uh, Dean clotheslines Seth outside to Roman. Um, uh, Seth sent is sent outside again. A roll up from Dean on Roman for a two count very early on. Uh, Roman and Dean double teaming Seth again. Uh, a dirty deed to tent gets blocked. Uh, shots get traded. A crossbody, but Roman doesn't go down. Uh, Seth back in. Uh, attacks Roman. Uh, drop kick Samoan drop combo to Seth and Roman from Dean. Uh, probably easy to see that is for me to explain it. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. Seth takes control of both men. Uh, sends Roman outside. Uh, Seth sends Dean into the middle turnbuckle. Uh, Roman with the drive-by outside. Uh, yep. Dean launches himself into Roman and Seth outside. Uh, Seth sends Dean into the steel steps. Uh, he then throws Roman into the barricade. Uh, Seth is sent into the timekeeper's area. 
Uh, Dean runs across the tables into both guys. Uh, missile drop kicks for Roman inside the ring now into a running bulldog and then a flying elbow for a two count from Dean. Um, Seth with a frog splash uh, on Dean for two count as Dean was actually just coming up from um, pinning Roman which was actually a very nice spot. Uh, uh, Seth goes for a pedigree but, gets, uh, but Roman uh, powers out of it. Uh, massive clothesline to Dean. We got a tilt to wall slam and Superman punch to both Dean and Seth. Um, goes to spear both guys at the same time but they both counter with a kick and Enziguri to Dean from Seth and a Superman punch to, uh, sorry Enziguri to Dean from Seth and then a Superman punch to Seth from Roman uh, all three men go down at this point uh, mm -hmm. a close line to Roman from Dean uh, shots traded between all three guys obviously anytime Roman gets a hit the crowd are booing big time and anytime the other two are hitting they're cheering. No surprise, yeah. really. Uh, a shield powerbomb to Roman, but gets denied. Uh, Roman's then sent outside. Uh, Dean with a big dive outside to Roman. Uh, and Seth with a dive to Roman as well. Uh, Seth and Dean team up to a massive yes chant from the crowd. Uh, Roman gets basically powerbombed by the two of them through a table, one of the announce tables outside. And the crowd went fucking apeshit for it. Uh, Seth, uh, Seth uh, while the two are celebrating Seth hits Dean with a chair uh, he also hits Roman with a chair I guess just for good measure uh, the pedigree is count, uh, uh, pedigree into a power bomb into a hurricane run uh, pedigree into a power bomb into a hurricane run from Dean that's all I've got written down here I guess I just didn't write it down well enough um uh, we get a suplex from the top rope into a falcon arrow combo for a two count from Seth. Uh, goes for another pedigree, pedigree but it gets countered. Uh, Seth goes to the top rope. Uh, Roman power bombs Dean and then Seth for a two count. Uh, Roman goes for his Superman punch. It gets countered into a DDT, which gets countered into the power bomb Razor's Edge that he likes to do, or is it Razor's Edge power bomb, whatever. Uh, that gets countered into a slide pin for a two count. Uh, the Superman punch Dean, who basically uh, gets knocked outside from it. Uh, Seth hits Roman f with a pedigree for a two count. Uh, another pedigree attempt, but Roman powers out of this one. Uh, sends Seth into the turnbuckle uh, with a power bomb. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, Seth sends Roman into the turnbuckle, turnbuckle with a power bomb. Uh, Roman does that thing where he doesn't sell it at all and just Superman punches him. Um, and then Spears Seth. Uh, Roman goes for the pin, but uh, Dean comes back in the ring and hits Dirty Deeds for a free count. And my throat mm. is currently hurting for speaking you'll so much. A, you'll, you'll, end, you'll get there in the end. Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, there was a lot more to this match, but there was so much happening, it was hard to take notes. That's all I can say. I thought this was a great match. Uh, I thought, it was oh, a fun match. It was good. Yeah, I think, and uh, I think these guys could probably have done with another couple minutes. Um, I thought all three of them looked fantastic in this. Um, honestly, if it hadn't been for the fact that we had a match of the year candidate earlier, this would have easily been the match of the night. Uh, but uh, just after the match is finished, the SmackDown locker room comes down to celebrate with Dean, uh, who obviously is taking the WWE champion over to SmackDown, so obviously that's why they're celebrating. I do like the fact that Roman's cousins were the ones that were holding Dean up on their shoulders. I was surprised they didn't do anything, any kind of angle to his, his, where he's going up to, Roman's going up to his, his cousins, like, dude, what the hell? Yeah, I'm your cousin, for fuck's sake. What are you doing? Uh, yeah. It's just an interesting little note. It, you, you know, the Usos have put, been the ones that put them on their shoulders. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, SmackDown are now in control of the WWE Championship. Um, obviously, Shane and Brian celebrating as well on ringside and stuff. Um, and that's pretty much how the show ends with the SmackDown locker room celebrating the ring with Dean. Uh, and believe it or not, it's taken us about an hour to get through the entire pay per view. Well, I think it's because this time. We we we're coming to this uh, again after it's been such a while that much of the little tidbit stuff that we usually mention we can't really. True, um, very true. It has been a good solid month. Well, it's been a month since the actual event. 
Yeah, true. It actually, it's been longer than that. Obviously, the pay per view was a week and a half ago. So, yes. Uh, but uh, I guess we'll go into the pay per view rating now. Um, do you want to go first, or shall I? You can go first, since you're you're the, you guy you hosted. You say first. Oh yeah, yeah obviously. That, I forgot that was a rule. Whoever introduces the video goes first for these things. I uh, mm-hmm. my overall pay per view rating was a B plus. I'd say it's pretty much the exact same rating I gave it, which was a B plus. Yeah, you had two great matches. Everything else was either decent or good. There wasn't a single bad match on this card. Yeah. Um. I can't really complain about that. It's so a, the, the only reason it, it 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 didn't get like an A was because, uh, you know, the whole finish with Yaron Young and uh, the Miz and just you know, some matches being a bit too short. Yeah, it, it was. Um... Uh, and I will say another reason I didn't give it an A was because the whole talk of Jericho segment with Randy Orton went on for a bit too long. That was actually the main reason I didn't give it a a minus or anything was the segment between Jericho and Orton. Uh, I also did not like the. I also took a couple points off for the um, end to the um, Miz Darren Young match as well. Cause, that's what I'm. That's what I just said. Yeah, earlier. It, it it made no sense. So. No. It, it, okay, you know, there were just little things here and there that kind of took away from the overall pay-per-view, but it was still a great pay-per-view, you know, nothing outright bad about it, really, in terms no. of match quality, anyway. It was still good. Yeah. Uh, which is a nice change, actually. Yeah. All right. Uh, match of the night. Let's get it out of the way. Same, Sammy Zane, Zane, Sammy yeah. Zane versus Kevin Owens. It couldn't be anything else. I, we're very similar tonight. <clears throat> yeah. Um, the two of them put on a fantastic match. Uh, yep. Uh, it does seem, though, that their rivalry is over. There was very little interaction from the two of them over the course of the next couple of weeks. Especially yeah. since they're both on the same brand now. I think for now they're just gonna put they're just gonna put a halt to it just so they don't run it to the. I think the thing is they just don't want to run it to the ground. You know. Owens and Zane, they don't need to be in a constant program together, but they can be those two guys who will just see each other and they'll be instantly pissed off by seeing each other, like Triple H and The Rock used to be. You know, even though their program would be finished, you knew these two had a rivalry, even yeah. if they weren't in one together at the moment. You know, and that's what it really needs to be. Put these two in another program together in, like, I don't know, about a year's time or something, but, you know, let them do something else for now. Uh, superstar of the night. Mine might surprise you, so I'll ask, I'll ask you to go first. Uh, you know, there was multiple guys this night that did a very tremendous job, and a lot of great work was done by a lot of good wrestlers. Fair enough. Do you want me to go first, then? Yes. I just want to hear what you. What is your th- surprise? My superstar of the night was Enzo Amore. Really? Uh, he was on fire in the match. Uh, the crowd were hugely behind him, and he had. And I wasn't. Con- his promo was a good couple minutes long, and not once was the crowd bored of it. That, for me, for, for that, in my opinion, was a superstar making. Uh, uh, sh- steal an appearance for Enzo at Battleground. I I, I thought it, it just completely... Alright, anyone that wasn't behind Enzo was now behind Enzo was the best way I could put it. Well, I, I can't fault you for that at all. Which is why I said... I, I'll, give you, I'll, give you, I'll give you props for actually at least coming up with something a bit creative for your answer because mine was just... Uh, Right. I, I've got I to really ask which had, one did you give it I to? Really, which one did I you really give it to? I really had to think about it because there was there were multiple ideas, but in the end, I just had to go with uh, Sami Zayn. Yeah, I knew you were gonna go with him, either him or Kevin Owens. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I, Enzo put on a good but, performance in the match. Damn, this whole Ambrose streak is in, is dying. Well, you gotta remember when Ambrose was getting superstar of the night, a lot of the guys were off with injuries and stuff. Yep. You know, now people are back, you know. He's still putting on good performances, but people are just managing to out uh, shine him at the moment. Uh, all right, uh, moment of the night for me, barely been announced as a mystery partner, even though it was expected. 
Hmm. Just the pure delight from the crowd that she was finally. My on moment the of the night was Enzo Moray's promo. Huh. Interesting. We both yeah. had Enzo got two awards for tonight out of six. That's not bad. Mm hmm. Like I said, for me, I think it was just the fact that the crowd were completely delighted by the fact that she was on a pay per view. And. And I have to admit, as I mentioned earlier, ever since I saw the two Bailey Sasha Banks matches, seeing those two in the ring at any time kind of sends goosebumps down my arm. Hooray! So, uh, so yeah, that's our six awards for tonight. Uh, anything else to say about the pay per view before we move on? I'd say so far, out of all the pay per views they've had this year, this is probably. Up there for one for one of the best pay per views of the year. Oh, absolutely! This was a consistently good pay per view. There was nothing other than the Jericho highlight reel segment. There was nothing bad about this pay per view. Uh, everything was at least decent. And if you can say the worst about a pay per view is decent, you know you've got a good pay per view on your hands. All right. So it's time, and since I don't have a drum roll sound effect. Thank you. It's time for the trivia challenge. Well done. <laughs> Three questions each to test each other's knowledge. As always, I will mention the rules. Uh, we are doing anything from WrestleMania 1 onwards. It can only be WWE as well. Um, so no WCW, no TNA or anything like that. Uh, we are also going on an honor system here where we won't go online and look up the answers. Obviously, we can't see each other, but we're trusting each other not to do that. Nope. Uh, I don't remember what the score is. It's been so long, and I've been so ill, I just did not have the time to go check. Mm. Alright, so we'll just go with whatever we've got tonight, and then I'll have a look at the score sometime soon. See who's actually in the lead. I think you're actually in the lead by either one or two points, though. Mm -hmm. Alright, so do you want to go first, or shall I? Uh, you introduced the episode, All so... Right. Uh, I'm going to go with the easiest question. Well, I, I consider it to be the easiest question first. Since we're talking about the Battleground pay-per-view, let's have a Battleground-related question. All right. What was the main event of the first Battleground pay-per-view? Oh, the first Battleground pay-per-view. Yes. Uh, hmm. I got to remember this because I got to remember the year, too. Uh, not so much because I... Um, I'm well, having problems. It helps you remember what rivalries and stuff are going on if you know the year, so. Okay, I believe the first year was 2013. That so. was correct. That is the right year. And and they were doing it back in October rather than July. I didn't actually look up the date, but that is probably correct. I would say it was Randy Orton versus Daniel Bryan then. Is that your final answer? Yeah. That is correct. That's uh, what I thought because, you know... Brian winning it and then getting it taken from Orton and the whole thing and all whatnot. Fair enough. Like so that was the easy question though, so I'm not surprised you got it. Yeah. Uh, so my easiest question I have here: Who were the, who are the only three wrestlers to have held the WWE Championship for longer overall days than John Cena? And you if you can, at, I mean, if you can't think of at least all three of them, if you can. Even if you mention at least two of them, I'll give you a point. All right. Uh, you're talking. Are you talking single runs or like just overall? Overall. Bruno Sammartino. Yep. Hulk Hogan. Yep. Hmm. Bob. Backlund. Do you want to hit? Oh, never mind. I guess I don't need to give you the uh, ask for a hit because you got all three of them. Yep. Bob, uh, John Cena has held the title for 1,240 days of his 12 current of his 12 WWE Championship rings. Uh, Bob Backlund has third with his two rings being a total of 2,138 days. Hulk Hogan is second with his six rings counting up to 2,185 days. And Bruno Sammartino's two rings combining up to four for four thousand and forty days. <laughs> Could you imagine a wrestler having that kind of reign these days? No, that wouldn't just <laughs> never happen. Oh well, um, not a bad question. So it's one apiece right now. All right, this one might catch some people out, which is why I've got it a second. All right, 
before uh, Glenn Jacobs became king in 1997, what were his, what were his two WWE on-screen personas? Isaac Yankum DDS and Fake Diesel. Fuck, I thought that very good. You're correct. I knew. I figured you'd get Fake Diesel, but I thought you might get confused about the name of the dentist he played. Nope, I remember oh, that well for done. some reason. Well then, I'll give you that. Two to you. Okay, now the second question is. It's another WWE Championship thing, but it's a bit different. Go ahead. Only only one time in the title's history did the WWE Championship uh, exchange hands three different times in one night. Which two, which pay-per-view event in 2007 was it? No Mercy. Yep. And for bonus points, who were the wrestlers? Uh, the first match was Orton, Triple H. Yep. Orton uh, was, a, remember, Orton was given the title. Yeah, he was handed the title by Mr. McMahon, I believe. Um, the second match was Triple H Umaga. Mm-hmm. And the third match was Triple H or Randy Orton in a last man standing match. Correct. There you go. You got that one pretty easily. Yeah, I, I remember that pay per view actually. I remember watching it. Um, well, there you go. To a piece, then. We're actually both doing really well with these tonight. But we this are. one might prove tricky. Okay. All right. How many titles in his WWE run did Sean Waltman, a.k.a. X-Pac, a.k.a. the 123 Kid, win? And by the way, I am not counting the WCW Cruiserweight Championship because that was technically a WCW Championship even though it was during the Alliance. So beside that, how many title, uh, titles has he won? Okay. Two times he was the European Champion. Correct. I know for a fact. I know for a fact two times he was the light heavyweight champion. That is correct. Uh, you, you said you didn't include the WCW Cruiserweight I'm, Championship. I'm not counting. I'm not counting that. I know for a fact he's won the WWF Tag Team Championship multiple times. I'm just trying to remember how many times because that will give me my overall. I'll be honest score. with you. Yes, the only other titles he has won is a Tag Team Championship, but how many times? Hmm. I know he's at least won twice with Kane, but I know that's not the only person he won the titles with. So. Yeah, very true. I think there was one with Bob Holly, but I swear there was one more. Well, I guess you mentioned the number, so I'm going to say in total, minus the, cruise, the one Cruiserweight Championship, because you're not counting that. Yeah. I'm gonna say he won. He's won held a total of eight eight different championship rings. Is that your final answer? Yes, that is correct. Hey. Uh, yeah, he won the title as you said two times with Kane, I believe. Once with Bob Holly, and I actually can't remember who the other one was with. Um, That's oh, hey, Ma- Marty Jannetty. Oh shit! Yeah, Marty Jannetty. That was it. Right, my first question, if you would, I need to get this right to stay tied with you for tonight, at least. All right, so your final question. Uh, not a WWE Championship-related one. It's actually a di- bit different. Uh, Jeff Hardy was removed from a match at WrestleMania 24 due to failing the wellness policy, despite having already qualified for it. There's two parts to this question to get the point. What match was he removed from, and why? <coughs> and but the fact, why was it significant on the fact that he was removed from the match? Well, 24, 24. That would have probably been money in the bank. It has to be. That's the first part of the question. All right. Uh, why was it significant that he was removed? You mean significant or the reason? Sorry. No, significant. What? Like what? Because of his removal, what happened? Hmm. No, Jeff Hardy. It's probably something drug li- related, but um. Yeah. Hmm. Let me think. I don't think the rivalry with his brother started up at this point. I think that was later it, on. That was that. That was the following year, beginning of two thousand. Yeah, I was just wondering how early that started, but I don't think that started until the fall. Uh. I don't actually know, so I'm going to say he was drunk on alcohol. No, the sig- no, 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 no. I'm not asking for why he was suspended. I'm asking what happened, beca- why 
what 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 I'm saying is be, what what had to change because he was no longer in the match. What had to change? You mean who took his spot? No. What had to change? Just what was the original planned idea that had to change that was changed because Hardy got suspended? Uh, he would have probably won, I guess, but. There you go. Oh. That's what I was looking for. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I was I was because getting confused. About the Hardy was to be Jeff was orig- It was originally planned for Jeff to win the Money in the Bank match, but that changed due to his suspension, so it went to CM Punk instead. Uh, who, ironically, if I remember, cast in on Jeff Hardy that year. Nope. Was it the next that was one? the next year. Oh, was it the next one? Oh, okay. I get a little bit the confused. First, the first year he cashed it on cashed it on Edge. Ah, yes. Yeah, so the Batista beat Edge down. Yep. Ah. <sighs> Good times. All right. Well, that's a trivia challenge. Although I did get quite lucky with that last one because I just basically took a guess at the end there. Um, but for your piece, that's not bad. Again, I'm not sure what the overall score is. I believe Thunder is in the lead. I'm just not sure whether it's by one or two points. Uh, but as I said, I'll let you know next time. I actually we do one of these episodes. So that was the pay per view and the trivia challenge. Uh, we don't usually talk about it very often in great detail, but I have watched the last two episodes of Raw. I did watch the uh, first episode of SmackDown after the draft. I watched both. I watched both episodes of Raw and SmackDown that followed. Uh, I have read the synopsis of what happened on the second SmackDown. I just didn't have time to watch it. Uh, but let's enough. first of all go into the draft. Uh, we talked about the possibility of this in a few months ago, actually, when it was first. Um, Announced. Well, it wasn't announced at the time. It, it was rumors about it. Oh. Uh, originally, when we started talking about it, uh, I was actually quite looking forward to the idea because I figured, you know, more champions and main eventers got made during the brand draft split time than there has been since the two uh, brands combined together. So I was actually really looking forward to this. Uh. Some interesting picks, though. Uh, Finn Balor got, like, the third pick for Raw. That was mm-hmm. surprising. Uh, though, I, I have to admit, considering his booking in, on Raw uh, for the first one after the draft, it doesn't surprise me anymore, considering how nope. far they've pushed that guy. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Finn Balor just getting the monster push now. Uh, yeah, we'll go he's, on to that in a he's, second. He's, he's, he's taking Roman Reigns' spot. Pretty much. Um, I f- originally I felt SmackDown had kind of got a little bit um, kicked in the nuts when it came to the draft pick. To be honest, though. Yeah, they. You can tell they're definitely trying to cater to different audiences with each show. So and SmackDown kind of got the more casual audience, where Raw is going to be more for the hardcore hey, wrestling. Fans. I thought it'd be the other way around, to be honest. Um, yeah, because it's, it's historically it's always been that way, but apparently not 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 the case with this time around. I guess they just wanted to actually switch it up. I guess so, um, but the I I have to admit I'm not sure how I feel about that because Raw has both the cruiserweights and the women's real women's wrestlers on Raw, I think you should have, like, one-on-one and one the other. Like, give the Cruiserweights to SmackDown or give the women's division to SmackDown. You know, it feels a little bit jam-packed on Raw, while SmackDown feels a little bit lacking. But, um, let's go into the first episode of Raw after the draft pick. Uh... I'll say this right now. This is one of the best Raws I have watched in a long Without time. Without question. It was so jam-packed from with hit after hit and a whole lot of uh, wrestling yeah. and not much talking. <clears throat> this was, you know, they've been announcing the whole new era thing for a while. This felt like a new era of wrestling had started. Uh, Raw had basically been given a complete overhaul. It had been given a new logo, a new uh, intro theme. Uh... A slightly altered set, like the announce table is no longer at ringside. At ringside, it's got more of a actual sports commentary position up uh, back where it had in 2003. Um, the camera work was a lot more. Um, how can I put this? It basically, camera angles and stuff that you would expect from an actual sporting event. 
know, it, it felt like they were really trying to create some kind of change, a new direction for uh, the product at the moment. Um, but yeah, the show started off really good. Uh, we got announced that there was going to be two Fatal 4-Way matches. Uh, the winner of those two fatal, fatal Four Way matches would go on to face each other in the main event. The winner of that match would go on to SummerSlam to face Seth Rollins for the newly dubbed WWE Universal Championship, uh, which is which is a silly title. True, which is essentially the World Heavyweight Championship uh, to coincide with the WWE Championship, which is now on SmackDown. Um, uh, the f- eight participants were, and I'm going to try and list them off if I can, <clears throat> Kevin Owens, Roman Reigns, Sami Zayn, um, I'm already forgetting them, Finn Balor, who was announced last, uh, Sheamus, help me out here, buddy. Uh, uh, shit. Rusev, Cesaro, and I'm missing one more. No, sorry, that's it, that's it, I've got everybody. Um, and this led to two fantastic four, Fatal 4-Way matches. The first one was definitely better, but both of them were good matches. Um, Finn won. Uh, Finn Balor won his match by pinning, I think it was Rusev, and Roman Reigns won his match, uh, and I didn't really pay attention to who he pinned, to be honest. Um, but uh, I thought these were two fantastic Fatal 4-Way matches. Uh it was they. It was just. I was really surprised they were managed. They managed. They even managed to pull two off at one night. And it was just. It was great. Yeah, it was fantastic. Um, I do think a lot of people were starting to worry, especially when Roman won his match, because he's like, "Oh God, we're gonna get Roman in the main event at SummerSlam now." Uh, didn't actually yeah. go off that way, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, after there the is fit- one thing I would have wanted to point out too that. Since Finn actually beat Roman, uh, this is the first pay-per-view of the year which Roman Reigns is not part of the main event. Yeah, it's true. Fuck. Oh, well, good to see him out of the fucking main event for once. We'll talk about Mm -hmm. what it looks like they're going to be doing with him shortly. But um, uh, after the first Fatal 4-Way match, well, a women's championship match took place between the champion Charlotte and Sasha Banks, and holy fuck, this is why I currently love women's wrestling. Uh, oh, boy, was it a great one. Oh, this was a doozy. Um, Sasha and Charlotte, fantastic chemistry in the ring. I haven't got, like, bullet points and stuff like I usually do for the pay-per-views here, but there were some fantastic moments here that I can actually remember. The massive moonsault to the outside from Charlotte, um... Which is always amazing. I think Charlotte's got the best moonsault in the com- in the. Oh, she's entire- got a great moonsault. It's probably sec- my dog's currently firing and wagging his tail while he's laid down. Fucking hell. Um, well then. Uh, yes, I can hear you, buddy. Stop tapping out already. Um, yeah, Charlotte's got the best moonsault compared only to Kurt Angle's, in my opinion. Um, I said that before, and I'll keep saying it. I cannot praise that move enough. Uh, Sasha just on form as always. Um, eventually, she pulled in Eddie Guerrero and got uh, Dana Brooke evicted from ringside, um, which was great. Was a fantastic nod to Eddie Guerrero. Yes, uh, I'm glad that they did that. Yeah. It, was a, it was a tasteful thing, unlike when he, he first passed away and they really exploited his death. She's essentially arguing outside with uh, Dana. Uh, while she's holding the championship, she throws the championship to Dana and then drops to the floor. And the ref sees it thinking that Dana's hit her with the title or is going to hit her with the championship. So he evicts her from ringside. Uh, a very nice spot. And it's basically what Eddie used to do during his lie, cheat and steal phase. Um, uh, the match continues for a little bit longer after that. Um, eventually, Sasha hits the... Uh, the backstabber and gets the bank statement locked in and taps out Charlotte and finally hands her a 300 plus day reign as women's champion. It's over! I thought this was fantastic. I, Sasha has deserved that championship for a long time. Um, it was a it was a real feel good moment. Oh absolutely. I, it's hard to believe that just 
three years ago, the fucking women on the show were absolutely atrocious. And now you've got the crowd popping big time for women's matches and the women themselves are putting on matches that some of the are outclassing the men by at least 90% of the roster. You yeah. know, I can only think of a few like Sami Zayn, Cesaro, Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins. They're the only ones that are really managing to out-wrestle some of the women at the moment. And when you've got that, that is fucking amazing to me. But uh, this match put a big, big smile on my face and I am so glad I watched Raw just for this match alone. Um, uh, as we already talked about, well, this is fun to already spoiled. Um, uh, obviously, we had Finn Balor and Roman in the main event and Finn went on to pin Roman clean. Yeah. Uh, another good match, I was actually. amazed and I was glad at the same time. Uh, actually, a really good match as well. Um, neither guy looked that bad to be honest um roman was definitely the aggressor for most of the match uh i don't really have anything to say it was a good match and overall i thought it was a great show i really had zero to complain about here uh there's a couple backstage segments with uh truth and goldust playing pokemon go uh which led to some interference in the match later on but it actually wasn't that bad it didn't really it, it was its entire storyline. It wasn't like a long cutaway thing. It actually had some purpose at the end of the day, which is always a good thing. Um, I, I'm not going to grade the Raw, but I would definitely recommend you go watch this single episode if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, anything you want to mention about that episode? You pretty much covered all the points I would have wanted to say. <laughs> uh, which leads us into the... <laughs> Okay, that was a that was pretty bad. Let's see. Oh no. We are back. Sorry guys, I dropped my microphone on the floor. Not Gotta get that. it together. Oh fuck, it stinks in here. He's farted again. Oh, oh boy. Fuck that stinks. Oh. Anyway. We're done with the first Raw of the New Year. We gotta kick him out of the room, then. <laughs> I can't. It's like 20 to 2 in the morning. I can't do that. <laughs> um, I know. Uh, that was the first Raw of the New Year. Fantastic. Which leads us into the first SmackDown. Um, the It's announced at the beginning of the show we're going to have a Battle Royal. Um, well, sorry. I'll start off again. Uh, we are announced that we're going to get a six-pack challenge in the main event. Uh, there'll also be a battle royal to announce who will be the last member of that six-pack challenge because we are announced at the beginning that we're going to get Dolph Ziggler, uh, Baron Corbin, Bray Wyatt, John Cena, uh, John AJ Cena, Styles. and AJ Styles. Whoever wins the battle royal will also be added to the six-pack challenge. Uh, so we have the battle royal, a pretty entertaining battle royal. Uh, in the end, though, Apollo Cruz came out uh, as the winner. No, honestly, wasn't too surprised. Yeah, when he was still in the match towards the end, I don't think it surprised anyone. He was the one that was given the uh, spot. Um, we'll go more into that main event later on. Um, uh, the only other note is we had the Becky versus Natalia rematch. Uh, a much better match than their one at Battleground, in my honest opinion. Um, Becky got the clean win. Uh, but the thing that I did note was the aftermath where we got introduced to all the new divas. And yes, I said divas uh, for the SmackDown yep. brand because I don't know um, a couple of these women are. But the fact that you have Eva Marie coming out shows me what type of women's wrestling we're going to have on SmackDown probably. And I am particularly not happy about this. Uh, I, I thought... It just felt like very throwaway just to show people who was going to be on the roster for the women on SmackDown. And it pales in comparison to who they've got on Raw. It's without question. Uh, definitely, actually, a bit depressing, really. You know, just... Uh, I don't know. It just... You've got Natty and Becky, obviously, who will put on good matches... I don't know who a couple of the women are like Carmella. I don't know how decent she is in the ring. Um, 
you've got fucking who was it Naomi as well there yep Naomi the same woman who doesn't know how to pin someone correctly mm. uh and again, even Marie, the less said about her, the better. Um, oh, without question. Uh, just make the woman a valet. She can't fucking wrestle. I actually, I'm going to hold off on that until she's actually in the match, but I do not have high hopes for the woman after seeing her in the ring before. Mm-hmm. Uh, the main event, obviously, the six-pack challenge. The actually decent match. Um, uh, surprisingly, Dolph Ziggler came out on top in that by getting a... Uh, super kick out on no way to AJ Styles. Uh, so our uh, WWE Championship match at SummerSlam will be Dean Ambrose versus Dolph Ziggler. A bit of a surprise, but hey, I'm I, I actually like this idea. I would like to see these two in the match. Um, mm-hmm. I like both guys. I'm a big Dean Ambrose fan. I'm a big Dolph Ziggler fan as well. I am actually interested to see where this goes. Uh, obviously, I don't think anyone's yeah. really expecting Dolph to win the title though. No. No, it's too soon to be taking it off Ambrose. While whilst I would like to see Dolph get a run with the belt, it's not going to happen here. I think he's just here no. to basically put on a good match with Dean. But hopefully, yeah. this will mean a somewhat decent push for Dolph at this point. He needs it. Mm-hmm. All right, the second Raw uh, uh, SmackDown. Uh, it was a decent ma- a decent show, but it wasn't anywhere near as good as Raw. So we lead into the second Raw of the new era. Um, honestly, it was kind of boring. The only thing I got here... To it, was mention, kind of, it kind of went on. It, you know, the first Raw, those three hours went by really freaking quickly. It was so... You know, the end of the show came and I was actually disappointed the end of the show came because I was enjoying myself so much. But the second one dragged on so much. Um, the only highlight I have here was the... Seth Rollins versus Sami Zayn match, which ended way too early. Without question. Um, I honestly have nothing else to say here, to be honest. There, there was a decent beginning to the show. Uh, Charlotte and uh, Sasha come out and have a promo. Uh, Jericho comes out and interrupts. Then Enzo comes out and interrupts and sets up a mixed gender tag team match, which was pretty good. Um, but other than that, I have nothing else to really say about the show. Uh, so I'm going to have to turn it over to you for now, Fernando, because I've heard some decent things about the second SmackDown, but I didn't watch it. Oh, yeah, the second SmackDown was uh, admittedly pretty well. Um, at the beginning of the match, it pretty much, you know, you pretty much started up with a segment with uh, Ambrose and Ziggler. And uh, then Ziggler would suddenly get an attack from Bray, who convinced him to, to do a match with him with Bray and Ziggler in which if Bray would win he takes the number one uh, contendership spot from Ziggler and despite uh, people like Shade and Brian constantly trying to tell Ziggler in the back there's you have nothing to gain from this as for this match you just shouldn't do it he Ziggler was like no I need to do it I need to prove to Ambrose that I can hang that I and that I'm as good as uh, and that I am as good as he doesn't want to think I am yeah. and all that stuff. And you know they did the match at the end of the night and that's exactly what happened. Pretty much. Uh, wasn't there actually? A, I've heard there was actually a really good in-ring promo from Dean and Dolph. Yeah. Uh, I uh, again I didn't actually see it so I haven't uh, thingy but apparently it was a fantastic uh. promo between the two and actually set up the match really well. With Dean kind of talking down to Dolph in a sort of heelish way, with Dolph basically saying, "You will steal the show at SummerSlam, but you won't walk out of champ- uh, walk walk out as champion." Sorry. Uh, again, I haven't read it, seen it, but I read the synopsis for the show. So, it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you've actually seen it. Was it better or worse than the first SmackDown? Oh, uh, this was definitely a much better SmackDown. Oh, was it? I'll actually have to try and watch it then. All right, so uh, we're actually having quite a short uh, show today. Um, so I guess we have some time um, left. So let's actually talk about SummerSlam. Uh, a couple of weeks away still. Uh, August 21st, I believe, is it? It should be uh, August 21st. Let me 21st. just get it up. Uh, just it to make is, sure. in fact, August 21st. Uh, day after my birthday, so I'll probably watch it. Oh, boy. Um, 
So let's see what we have here. Alright, so uh, the first match that was announced actually quite a while ago was the Brock Lesnar versus Randy Orton match. Yep. Uh, predictions for this one? It should be interesting cause with Orton knowing Orton's style. I think due to the whole recent uh, controversy with Lesnar, it probably won't be as lopsided as it probably originally would have been, but I wouldn't be surprised if Lesnar wins. So uh, I'm thinking almost a 95% guarantee Lesnar's walking out of this as the victor. Yeah. It is brought Lesnar, you know, despite the whole controversy with the um, enhancements or whatever it was that he was taking during his UFC run recently. It's brought Lesnar. Yeah. Yeah, it, nothing's going to happen there. He's still going to walk out the winner here. Uh be interesting to see. Everyone just wants to see Orton hit that RKO during the match. Um, obviously, we have the newly christened WWE Universal Championship match between Finn Balor and Seth Rollins. Uh, thoughts and predictions? Uh, which match, sorry? Uh, F- Balor and Rollins for the Universal Championship. Could be. It would be a fairly interesting match. It that could go be either way. I would love to see Balor win it, though, personally. Uh, I think right. it would. I think it would be really good to have Balor win. All right, Balor's who you want to win. Who do you think is going to win? Balor. <laughs> I'm actually going to agree with you because I, I Rollins is a fantastic wrestler. He's ar- arguably the best talent they've got right now. He's but, definitely a good contender for that title, for for what you just said. Yeah, but. Balor is brand new, Let's... and I think the WWE want the Universal Championship to be this thing for the new guys. So I'm expecting Balor to actually come out on this uh, with this on top. Uh, Ambrose versus Ziggler for the WWE Championship. I'd say probably Ambrose. Yeah, I'm saying about a 90% chance Ambrose here. Uh Ziggler obviously will put on a good match with practically anybody, but uh, uh, yeah, this is just an enhancement match for Dean, really. Uh, Sasha Banks versus Charlotte for the Women's Championship. Charlotte will definitely... I mean, that's, hang on, sorry. Let me rephrase that again. Uh, Charlotte will definitely not win. Almost, Yeah, it's almost a guarantee Sasha Banks is winning this. I'll be very surprised if they... Uh, take the belt off uh, Sasha this quickly. That would, be a very, that would be a terrible idea. Yeah. Uh, the Miz versus Apollo Crews for the IC title. I want to say it would probably be Cruz to win, but honestly, I would not be surprised if by some ch- dirty tactic Aunt Miz retains. I'm going to go with Cruz for this one. Cause- yeah, cause yeah, I mean, I would, I, I could see him winning, but again, I just wouldn't be surprised with all missing because he really likes to push the fact that it's gonna be a quote unquote never ending reign. I want Miss to retain so that Sammy can go out and beat him for the IC title. Yes. Oh no, wait, they're on different brands now, aren't they? Fuck. Yeah, that's the only problem. Oh yeah, it can't happen. So yeah, I'm gonna actually stick with my pick of Cruz here then. Um, Cena versus Styles, running off the Trinity here. I'm afraid they're going to do the thing they did with Owens like from last year, but I want I to say, for the love of God, please make Styles win. Just because it's WWE, I'm going to say Cena's going to win this. I want Styles to win, but I just can't see WWE letting him win this overall rivalry. So, yeah, Cena for me. Uh, and though I don't have it here on the wiki page, I think it's an almost guarantee we're going to have Rusev versus Reigns for the US title, or at least in the match together. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, it'll pretty much happen. Rings versus Rusev. Honestly, as I hope, I hope they don't do what I think they're gonna do. But really, I think Rusev might actually hold on. It won't be clean. No. But Rusev will probably get a DQ win over Reigns, uh, which yeah. I think will set up a match for if they decide to do it this year, a Night of Champions, where Reigns will probably win the U.S. belt or something like that. Uh, I again, I don't think it's been announced yet, but probably going to have the club versus the New Day for the tag team titles as well. Yeah, probably. Uh, I'm actually. 
again, I think this might be a match that goes like a two series where it'll be like New Day wins at SummerSlam, but um, the club will win it at Night of Champions. Yeah, probably. Uh, and that's what I can really think. I don't think they've set up any more matches for um, SummerSlam so far. Or even hinted at any, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you think of anything? No, I'm 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 kind of I'm really a little bit out of it still. So. Oh, uh, fair enough. Um, well, I guess that's it then. This has actually been a pretty short episode. We're well under two hours today. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, so, uh, I haven't mentioned it to you, but I did actually talk about it during the time when you went for a piss. Uh, I know we said we would do a WrestleMania live recording at some point. We still have planned to do that. We just need to figure out a decent time and day to do that, really. Yeah. Uh, that will be interesting to do. We've we've never done this live before where we're watching the show. Um, we'll try and come up with something anyway. Uh, but if, Yes, without question. If we don't get to that between this and the next episode, episode 10, yes, we're finally into double digits, will be SummerSlam. Ten episodes. Mm-hmm. It's gone by pretty quickly. All I can, th- all I'm trying to think is, what the fuck are you eating? Popcorn. Oh, okay then. Alright, guys. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see you in the next episode. I guess. Well, so, yeah. Sorry, we seem a bit out of it. It's just. It's the evening, and, you know, it's been such a while just trying to get back into the hang of things. Yeah, we've, um, as I said, it's been a, a well over a month for us. Uh, it, it's, like, almost 2 a.m. for me, and obviously we're not used to doing it at this time of day. So we'll get into the, we'll get into the swing of things with this eventually. One day. I'm sure we will. One day. I thought it was New Day. Close enough. One day rocks. One day rocks. (laughs) Later, guys. Later.